So that was our video of a little boy playing on the CBB's website um, and I just wanted to kick start this evening by reminding us all why it's so great for designing for children, especially when you see those kind of reactions. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Leanne Dugan and I'm an Act and Creative Director at the BBC, currently working in the BBC homepage and content discovery team. But before I joined that team, I was a design lead in children's for a number of years. Um, and tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experience of designing playful interfaces and some of the techniques and processes I use to design those. So let's just look at BBC Children's. So BBC Children's is split into two, CBBs and CBBC. <coughs> CBBs is aimed at 0 to 6 years of age and CBBC 6 to 12. And we also cater for our grown up audience too. So as a designer in BBC Children's, we are responsible of giving our much loved brands to our audience. Um, and that is across four screens. Mobile, tablet, desktop and TV. So as a designer in BBC Children's, I've worked across all of these screens However, what I'm focusing on tonight is the, the work which we've done across um, apps. So in children's, in the past couple of years, we've um, developed quite a few different apps, but the three which I'm going to concentrate on is the CBBC Playtime, the CBBC Storytime, and the CBBC Go app. So let's have a quick look at these apps. So CBBC Playtime is an app um, which is all based on the CBBC world. So the user is given their own hot air balloon which they personalise and it takes them into their world where they can navigate around the world left and right to different games. So these are just a few of the examples of the different games in the app, all which rely on later capabilities of the device too to really enhance the experience. Um, the user can then further personalise their CBB's world by running little bugs from the games. So this app launched in August 2013, um, it's been BAFTA nominated and it's had millions of downloads as well as being number one across the stores. We have the CBB Storytime app. So this app is an interactive storybook where the user again is taken into the CBB's world but this time it's all inspired on a pop-up book. So the user opens the book and they can swipe left and right through the pages. All the assets fold up, dangle down to make it feel truly interactive. So the user has the option to read by themselves or have the story read to them and there's little interactive games to encourage them to interact with the story. So if we just get to the point where they make the selection, so these are all the different stories in the book. They select which brands they want to play with or read, and then you can see the assets fold down and you're taken into the story start screen. And then we have the CBBC Go app. So the CBBC Go app launched a few months back, and this is aimed at the older audience. And this one's all inspired on the Rubik's Cube. So the users can swipe up, down, left and right, they can tilt the device, they can shake to get to shuffle the content. And we also have these little playful animations just to add another element to it. So the user can access clips, games, um, news round articles and other fun things to do. So each of these apps look and feel very, very different and they're all playful in their own very different ways. So how did I go about creating all these different apps? Well, I followed a very similar process throughout them all. So first of all, always start with a mission statement. And a mission statement is really, really important because it aligns everybody's thinking in the project team. So it's really important to write this with your editorial, your product, the technical people, to make sure that you're all heading in the same direction. So this is an example of the mission statement we wrote for the Playtime app. So it's a app for children and their families, enabling them to play with their favourite CBBC brands anytime and anywhere. The app will offer users a safe and trusted experience free from in-app purchases and pester power marketing. The experience will enable learning through play in a big fun way. Without the mission statement there was nothing pinned down and this was the basis at the start and helped us all to head in the same direction. So once we've agreed on the mission statement I always then go away and create some design principles. And I think it's really really important to create design principles. Again it starts to bring the thing to life and helps to ground what this thing is going to be. So if we look at the principles from the Playtime app, so we knew we wanted it to feel immersive, it had to be playful, it had to be personal, we wanted it to feel tactile, and importantly it had to be safe because it's aimed at a young audience. So by understanding these principles it meant that we could go away and start design for experience on what each of these different things mean. And it helps again to align that everybody's in the same direction. <coughs> and then of course you can start on your idea generation. But before you actually start your idea generation, I think it's really important that you think like your audience. 
So it can be quite tricky for us to think like our audience because we obviously left childhood a long time ago. So there's some techniques which I used to run with my design team to help them go back into their childhood just to try and ignite their brain in a different way. So one of these te techniques is called the brick game. So what I'd say to my design team is, for the next minute, I'd like you to think of a brick and write down as many different things that you can do with this brick. So as soon as we say the word brick, you'd probably go away and think of a household brick, and then you'd start to think, of, you know, what can you do with this brick? And the stuff which comes out is, you'd flatten something, you'd use it as a step, you'd use it as a weight, you'd build a house, a yoga prop, and the more sinister, you'd smash a window, kill somebody, and sink a dead body. <laughs> So this is the kind of ideas which come out when you think of it as a grown-up. So, okay, so I'd say, okay, that's great. So I'd like you to go and do the same exercise again, but this time think like you're four years old or whatever age you know, you're aiming to design this product for. So by saying, can you go away and think about it as being four years old, you probably think of a different kind of brick. You start thinking of a Lego brick or a Jupiter brick or something a bit more playful. And the things which come out in the next minute is very different. So you'd say, it could be a worm house, it's a doll's house, you'd use it as a goal post, it's a seesaw, you'd look through it, you'd care for it, you'd paint it, you'd put eyes on it, and it's really just changing the perspective of you know, this object. You can use any object to do this, I've just used a brick, but literally you could use anything. So now that you're starting to think of the world of the, through the lens of a child, you can go away and start to generate ideas. So there's loads and loads of different ways you can go and generate ideas, Crazy 8 being quite a popular one. But one which I wanted to talk to you about tonight was one which I used on the Storytime app, which I thought worked really well. And that one's called Brainwriting. So Brainwriting works where you have your group of people you want to generate ideas with, and you give them a grid. And you give them a question, so it could be something like, how might the users navigate between the brands in a playful way? And silently, for the next five minutes, you start to write stories around maybe different mechanics or different things which might feature in this app. When the five minutes is up, they pass their paper around and you get the next one. And you start to grow those ideas until your piece of paper you started with came back to you. You then start to pull out the themes of the different ideas, but this is a really good, idea, good technique to use, especially if you're trying to generate ideas with people who aren't comfortable drawing either. It's just a different tool to have. So loads and loads of good ideas came from this, just a couple which came out was an idea of perhaps it could be a story time tree. So we're using this idea of a tree to navigate between the different stories. It was a nice metaphor and the idea that perhaps the tree could grow with you the more you read, it would start to flower, it would start to blossom. And you know, if you weren't reading very frequently, it would start to wilt, so you'd have to look at <coughs> it. The idea of the pop-up book came from that um, brainwriting exercise as well. Um, so the idea that you obviously have a really, really playful experience, that you can pull things, push things, you know, another idea which came from brainwriting. <coughs> and then there was the idea of the CBB sets. So I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the CBB set, but in one corner is this um, area for the for story time, and they've got this circular bookcase. Um, so from this brainwriting exercise, we thought, well, perhaps we could use, take that as inspiration as a mechanic to navigate between the different stories. So loads and loads of different ideas, just maybe another technique to have in your back pocket if you're with somebody who's not perhaps trying to generate ideas with people who are perhaps not very comfortable drawing. As you all know, it's really, really important to involve your audience. And I know some of the speakers here tonight are going to talk a bit about the techniques you can use to do some user research with. But at the BBC, we do loads and loads of research and involve our audience really early on too. <coughs> We do um, formal lab-based sessions, that's like a one-to-one -one thing where we're testing usability and getting gathering ideas, gathering feedback on our ideas. Um, we do more informal guerrilla testing out in schools and nurseries. Um, so we're testing a lot and very often. You don't have to wait until something's finished to put it in front of your audience either. So these are some really early screen grabs from um, the Playtime app of some of the very early prototypes and here we were trying to test how playful things were before we pushed anything further or before we went too far down the line. So the one on the left is a very early version of the CBB's world and this is where we were trying to test with the audience whether they would be able to swipe left and right and whether they found that mechanic playful. 
The one in the middle is a very early version of the Alpha Box game. So here we're testing like hit state sizes. Would the user know what to do to pick up the Alpha Block and sit it on the platform? Was it too fiddly for them? And the screen on the right is a very early version of the Tree Food Tall and Flying game. So here we're testing the, the tilt mechanic on the devices. Could the user do that? Was it too difficult for them? Um, did they know how to pick up the chuckleberries? How far and how playful could we really push this? Again, really, really important to test early on. However, sticking prototypes in front of children aren't the only kinds of testing that we do. Um, I also do quite a lot of drawing-based activities with them. So if you remember back at the beginning of the talk when I spoke about the design principles, one of the design principles was personal. So I had to go and understand what the personal means for the child. And for me to do that, it can be quite difficult to, for a young child to articulate what's important to them. So I did a drawing based activity with them where I basically gave them a sheet of paper with some hills and a few books on and asked them to go and draw what would they like to see in their CBBS world. So these are, some, these are a few of the drawings what came back. So skipping ropes, fireworks, superheroes, flowers, fruits, lots and lots of great different activities. It was actually Red Nose Day as well that day, so you can see there's some red noses in there. <laughs> yeah. um, so by taking the work from you know, the user research, that obviously then went into the app, and this is inspired by the little books which they win when they play the games. So that's how they personalise their experience. All these ideas, pretty much all of them, were coming from what the children were telling us. Another example of user research um, in a drawing-based activity was for the CBBC Go app. So on the CBBC Go app, there's um, the ability to leave the app and go and play your games online. And we were really struggling to find an icon which illustrated this. We tried a few different icons, but we just admittedly were not getting it. So I decided to go out to a school and go and ask a group of 10 year olds and explain the situation and say, this button here is going to take you and do that. How would you describe that to your friends? Can you, go, can you, can you draw something your friend would understand? So there's loads and loads of lovely ideas came back, and one of them which came back was this, something so simple but something we missed, and it's the idea of a game controller wrapped around the world. And by asking them to do it that their friend would understand, it helped us to understand you know, how they saw things and how they wanted things to look. So you can see how it then got into the app. And finally, I just wanted to mention, it's really, really important, I found, to look around you, is it's that, those elements which are going to make the experience feel really, really playful and really bring your experience alive. Look at the outside world, look at toys, look at books, just take inspiration from whatever a child interacts with. So on the CBB's Playtime app, you can see that it changes from night to day. And we also use seasons too, because whatever's happening in the world, as you can see from like Red Nose Day, is really important to the child at that time, and it's really important to reflect that into the apps. Things like as well, like the little train going past, it's that element of surprise. If you remember when you were a child, if you walked into a room and you saw like a train go past at the top, of the, it, it was all that, was that magical element. That, oh look at that, it's trying to get all those kind of things in to make it extra special. The story time app, when we were, when we were working on this app, it, the initial designs felt very, very flat. Um, it just didn't feel interactive enough, like a pop-up book. So we had to go away and we explored further and got some real physical pop-up books and looked at what is it which makes them so interactive and so engaging that was missing from our app. And without doing that bit of research, we probably would have felt it would have continued to feel flat. So by taking inspiration from pop-up blocks, you can start to add little playful incidentals into it just to make that, give that element, that extra degree of playfulness. So that's a very, very quick summary of some of the processes and techniques I used for uh, designing a few of these apps. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much.